Hey everyone! Alright, so you can see there's a little bit more done on my face, and this video is mainly just going to um, talk about a few different kinds of powders that you could use to um, set your foundation, and then also um, about contouring and highlighting and how I personally do it whenever I get in drag, and like incorporate like the cheek color and everything like that, so you get to see the powder process from start to finish just like you did all the other ones. Um, so yeah, if you want to see how I do the differences that you see now, um, just go ahead and keep watching. Alright, so powders. Same thing as foundations, there's tons of different powders out there that you can use. Um, there's pressed powders, loose powders, um, and then different coverage levels for powders. Like, you could go with something like this, which is like the powder for stage, and this is Cody powder. This stuff has been around for ages, and it's just a loose powder. Um, this one is the translucent. It comes in colors, but translucent is like the powder to use to set all of your makeup. Um, you can just pretty much take like a big powder puff like this and just pounce it all over your face and be done with it. Um, this, again, has a translucent color, um, or not really a color, it's just translucent powder, so it goes on without really showing anything. It just sets everything, but you can get it in colors, and the colors have more of like a full coverage that you can sheer out, which would be similar to um, MAC Studio Fix Powder. Um, this is a powdered foundation. It actually has a full coverage to it, so you do get coverage out of this foundation. Um, when I do my drag videos, this is normally the powder that I use, the Studio Fix, because it gives me full coverage. So I use this in conjunction with like the Studio Tech. Um, but yeah, full coverage, but you can shear it out a little bit. Um, if you use a fluffy brush, it'll shear out. If you use more of a brush like this, you can get maximum, maximum coverage. But you can still get maximum coverage from a brush like this. So it all depends on how you use the product. But there's two. Otherwise, you can get like an HD powder. This is like pure silica. Um, this one is a white powder, so if you have a darker skin tone, it might leave an ashy tint on you. That's the only thing that is kind of eh about invisible translucent setting powders, is if they're white, a lot of the times when you use it on a darker skin tone, it'll leave like an ashy cast on the skin. But, sometimes you can get setting powders like this. This one is from MAC Pro. This is peach setting powder. If you are a makeup artist or a makeup enthusiast, anything, if you have a darker skin tone, I highly, highly, highly suggest finding a way to get peach set powder. And the reason I say this is peach set powder is like Max Invisible set, only, like the name says, it has a peach tint to it. Now what that's going to do is you can use it on any skin tone that's darker. It will have the same effects as Invisible Set, but it won't leave that ashy tint on the skin. It'll actually just make the skin look nice and natural. Another great thing about it is it's a little bit on the warm side, so if you want to warm up your skin tone a little bit, you can use this powder and just get a little bit of warmth that um, isn't too overpowering and doesn't look fake as if you use like an NW powder or a powder that's just strictly warm. So this is great to add warmth. Um, if you're darker, it's going to have the same effects as Invisible Set, so, um, yeah, recommend this for anyone into, um, makeup, makeup artistry, yeah. Another one, or just another one that I know of, because there's tons of different brands of powder out there, um, Ben Nye has really, really great, um, loose powders. They're known for stage makeup, so their stuff holds up. It's got more of a full coverage, but I would highly recommend either Ben Nye's, um, this one right here cost me $12, so it wasn't that much, and you get quite a bit of it. Um, I get this at Beatniks in Chicago, but you can get Ben Knight online as well. Otherwise, if you don't have a ton of money to spend, and you want to go the cheaper route, for something that's very great, great quality for a low price, Cody Powder. You can get this at, like, CVS. Um, I think most um, places that carry drugstore makeup carry Cody Powder at least in the United States to do. I don't know about overseas, I'm sorry. But if you ever come to the States, then go to CVS and stock up on this stuff. Otherwise, you can get it online. Um, this one, I've said before in a video, this one just spilled all over me, but um, Cody Powder is known for having a very strong scent to it. And um, the last time I described it is it kind of smells like when you walk into a nursing home. So it does have like that rose water um, kind of scent to it. it. smells very rose-like. But um, 
yeah, that aside, we're going to get into doing all the stuff with powder on the face. So I'm using the Cody powder and I have it on my powder puff and I'm just going to take that and I'm just going to pounce it all over every square inch of my face. Okay, so now that I have the uh, powder all over my skin, I go in and I start working on like my cheeks and my contours since um, I do those with powders. Um, if you wanted your highlight to stand out even more, you could have used like the clown white underneath your eye as well. Um, just like I mentioned, you could use it for the brow. Again, I don't like that look personally, so I don't do it. Um, but now for the cheeks, I like a little bit of color on my cheeks. I don't like it bright red. I don't like it hardcore intense pink um, or purple or anything like that. So I actually just go in with this blush right here, which is um, Deep Throat from NARS. And then I just use um, an angled brush, just a fluffy angled brush like this. And then I load up the brush and then just right above where I'm going to do my contouring, on the highlighted area, I'm going to apply this to get a nice light um, pink tint on my skin. So you can see it's not too overpowering, but it still gives me enough color that it's noticeable. Okay, now as you can see on this side, I started my contour. Um, I like to start and build my contour up and then add a lot more depth in certain areas. So to do this, I just go in with this right here. This is Blunt Blush from MAC. It's just a nice matte brown. Um, it's not too dark, but it's dark enough that it's going to show a difference. And then I just go ahead and start to etch that in right underneath my cheekbone. Um, I have a video on contouring and highlighting already. So you could watch that one to see um, how to do it for like different shapes of the face. But for doing more of like a drag style, pretty much all you want to do is just make your face look more feminine and softer most of the time. So if you have very angular cheeks, maybe round them out a little bit. Um, so that's all I do. I just go against my natural, um, the hollow of my cheek naturally because it does pop out quite a bit. And then when I get in this area right here, Instead of coming down how I normally would to contour like as a guy or just going straight down, I kind of curve it up just a little bit, but not a ton. So I don't look like I actually carved out that area where it looks like it's that. Um, again, I'm just doing it softer at first, and then in the areas where I really want that contour to pop, I'll go in at depth um, later with another color. Then I take this same color, the blunt. And then that line that I did earlier with the highlight, you can still see it. I actually go right on top of that and add some depth to make my temple look a little bit more hollowed out. It's a good trick to start to reshape your hairline if you need to, because on women, their hairline is lower than men's most of the time. And then also, if you're like me and you have a funky hairline, then you can fill in all this area with the darker color and kind of make your forehead seem a little bit smaller. So this is another one of those tricks you can do um, and like everyday makeup, just of course not as dramatic as you would or that as dramatic as I'm doing it right now. Then when that area is done, I work on my jawline. Now my jawline right here is a little bit too much for me. So I go and I soften it up and what I do is I just tilt my head so it pops out a little bit and then I put this color right on the edge. And in the other video I mentioned um, oval face shape and this is what I'm going to do in order to help give myself that oval face shape so that way whenever you see it's softer and this part now is going to look like Part of the shadow that's cast from just my natural jawline and just make sure you blend it out so there aren't any harsh lines and then you can see it starts to morph and look like it's natural but don't go too dark and don't pull the color out too far because remember um, you want this area to stay kind of light you don't want it to look like there's a five o'clock shadow there 
Now I'm going to go in, same color, blunt, but this time I'm taking a fluffy eyeshadow brush, and I'm going to pick up some of that, and I'm going to work on my nose. And I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to start right underneath my brow, and then I'm just lightly going to dust down the side. Now that I have the contour on pretty much how I like it without going too dark, before I add that really dark color, I'm just going to kick up my highlight a little bit. I don't know if you can tell the difference between the sides. I just took like a brush like this. It's a flat, fluffy brush. This is Max 136. It is discontinued. Um, I'm sure there's like very uh, much cheaper alternatives out there to this. And then I'm taking NW25 Studio Fix, um, and I'm just applying that right on top of the areas that I highlighted. Now with this, you could actually use one of the colored Cody powders, or you can apply the translucent Cody powder pretty heavily, and you'll get the same effect. Now that I have the highlights bumped up, I'm going in now, and I'm going to add depth only to certain areas of my contours. I'm going to use the same brush I used with um, Blunt earlier, and this time I'm going to use NW50 Studio Fix Powder. Um, it's darker. You could use just a darker blush. You could use um, powders that are made for contouring, like Ben Nye has some. Um, just you can use whatever you want, pretty much. This is just what I use, because um, it's what I have and it's what I'm used to using. And so I'm going to mainly right underneath the hollow, or right underneath my cheekbone in the hollow of my cheek, I'm going to make my contour a little stronger, like that, so my cheeks really pop out. And then right next to the bridge of my nose. Then a very, 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 very little bit underneath my bottom lip. And I kind of put most of the brush on my lip and then just go back and forth so that way the brush doesn't get too far down. To add that, you can see that some of it got on my lip, which is totally fine because I can just wipe that off. Rather have it on my lip than have it all the way down on my chin. So, since the contour and highlighting is done, I would now move on from there, and me personally, I would move on to the eyes. Um, so I hope this little mini video was helpful to some of you, um, maybe give you ideas about how to use your powders, or just a few more tips and tricks on how you're doing your contouring and highlighting. So again, just like the other videos, you can either click over here and go back to the main video, or you can click over there and go to the next one, which will show you how I'm going to do my eyes. Um, yeah, but until those, I will see all of you soon. Bye.